Hello, and welcome to the next lecture in the Divine series. My name is Red, or is it Blue? Anyway, today we're going to talk about- We interrupt this lecture because the fates have had their say. A broken hand, an ailing pet, and now a viral infection. It's not the COVID variety and I should soon be okay, but all these many events have pulled me in a new direction. You see, my friends, we've covered both the praying and the study. The magic of the hands and fists we've started to make clear. But lectures while I'm sick will make the lessons really muddy. Imbalance of the humors means my humor isn't here. And so we're using inspiration, re-rolling that d20, and focusing attention on a subject not too hard. And so we've started moving down a subject much more friendly, and looking at the history of the magic using... If you're playing D&D and you want to dance and sing, or conjure rousing speeches, or debate some more your thing. Classically a virtuoso, postmodernly a rapper, although. Anachronisms the DM hates unless it's something that they make. Maybe give out whispered rumors or dole out fear and awe, inspire with your swords or your doctorate in lore. Or be a mime or play the spoons, harmonica or else kazoo, paint a picture, act performance, bagpipes are the best annoyance. Sonnet, haiku, verse pastoral, Epics free blank ode or moral, villanelle or high lyric, soliloquy or limerick, plays, ballets, improvisation, post dramatic inspiration. If you want to play this way, then you ought to be a bard. The bard has history in gaming from the first age to the last. It once was difficult to game, but now you get it very fast. So let's look at this jack of trades, let knowledge now ensue. Beginning with the first stage, or the strategic review. O oh, Doug Schwegman, you man of lore and word, you penned the first bard in 76. And though the inspiration seems absurd, the Viking Celtic minstrel did the trick. Through diplomacy you calm the brigand, through percentile charm you trap the rest. 10% per ranks the mind is sickened, some races have bonus against the test. And lore is passive too, no need to roll, and grows alongside your power to control. A bard of level 1 can start the game as human, elf, or dwarf, or hobbit too. But only humans can reach the true fame of ninth level or higher in this crew. Bard alignment should always be neutral and can speak as many languages as smarts. With human instruments pure and brutal, this class smashes face with beauty and art. And why the focus on the druidic theme? Inspiration from the old Celtic dream. But that was the beginning, and sure Doug was on it, but let's now go to first so I can finish the sonnet. In the player's handbook of D&D 1E, the disclaimer for bards is presented to thee. The bard is a mixture of fighter and thief, so it's the right of the DM not to be queef. But maybe the disclaimer they could have eschewed, because good golly wow! This class is hard to get to. A 15 at least is needed for strength, for charisma, for wisdom, and also for dex. A 12 in intelligence, a 10 in con, and that's only part of the prereqs to put on. The bards are all humans, or else are half-elves. Remember most races are classes themselves. All bard stutters fighters until level 5, to then switch over to thief if they're still alive. Twixt the fifth and the ninth, to thief they must be. If e'er the bardic class, you shall see. From that point, you're a bard, though technically druidic. At least in your lessons, your talent's more fluidic. Your potential for charm still increases by XP, but stops at 95, so no more guarantee. Likewise, the lore always rises slowly, makes sense as you start out so newbie and lowly. Roll under your chance to get legend lore, affects magical items, armors, weapons, and more. Bards can use music and verse and in song, but poetry and song in the same round is wrong. Poetry uttered in two rounds will give, 
a plus one bonus and rolls combative. The Song of a Bard is a charming action and affects any creature regardless of faction. A charm person or monster spell can be cast, or a mesmer suggestion can be weaved in at last. Their song also negates the Song of the Harpy, and any other like-minded assaults on the party, and also the music of this magical speaker completely negates the Violet Shrieker. In 2nd edition, the bard changed career, no longer a druid, now a lackadaisical deer, living off charm and wit, glibness and brogue. The obvious overclass for the bard was the rogue. The jack of all trades, but master of none, and again the DM called the shots to play one. He could use any weapon, wear chain mail, no shield, and finally it was the arcane he could wield. A bard's intelligence informed of the spells he could learn and could cast and could make it more swell, the DM chose the spells that the bard started with. If you hated them too bad, player choice was a myth. But the songs of the bard, their power was clear, and they could bend moods like they could bend ears. All creatures who heard the bard give a performance had to save or find their mood changed to conformance. This song could also be the same as before, in the first stage to give the party a plus one in war, or else a plus one to their saving throws, or plus two morale if the fight badly goes. And if the bard sings and does nothing more, then the charms of the monsters are safely ignored, and finally they could stay what they know, on the things that they picked from the pockets of foes. And onwards from there the class gained its freedom, from subclass to full class, from 2e to 3. Dim. In some ways more simple, in others complex, from sonnets to couplets to something apex. So there once was a new third edition, who threw out the subclass traditions, and created instead from the masses of thread a tapestry of juxtapositions. No longer a thief or a fighter, the bard needed levels in neither, but now in return it no longer burned, just simmered as part of just either. With average points in attack, and so many skills, but they lacked. The points they required, so skills all just mired, and one or two points in fact. That was the class's whole line. The jack of all trades was just fine, and what they lost in skills they made up in thrills from spells and performance design. The bard gets their own spell list, from cantrip until level 6. Enchantment, illusion, dominating confusion, and summoning monsters for kicks. But the true power come from their songs, correcting the fears and the wrongs. But the five sentence stanza can't do them all justice, so let's quickly go to free verse. A bard can use the bardic music a number of times equal to the level of the bard in question. At first that is limited to inspiring courage, granting plus one to attacks and plus two versus fear and charm, or limited to a counter song, whereby a victim of a mind-controlling effect can swap their will saving throw for the bard's performance check, or limited to fascinate whereby a creature saves versus the performance check or sits and watches the performance. Later they gain inspire competence which increases skills by plus two as long as they can hear the bard. Later they can suggest to another that they do a thing they tell them to do, and finally inspire greatness, gives a creature temporary hit points, plus two bonus to attacks, and plus one bonus to fortitude saves. And finally they gain their bad knowledge, same as before, but applies to anything. And that could be learned by stories, be it local celebrities, the king, or magical items. And that was the third edition. Bam, just kidding, there's a little more to go. Cause 3.5 just came alive and now there's more to show. The skill is still extensive but we have more points to use. Like armor doesn't stop the arcane casting of confused. Before the songs were only tied by skill points in the skill, and so the bard could multiclass in something that could kill. The rogue who sneaked in sack attack could also get perform. And so a bard who multiclass was sadly much the norm. The bards that made the bard at class were now tied to the bard. And in return the song progression really did go hard. Inspire courage now included weapon damage rolls. Inspire great this happened sooner allowing more control. Song of freedom let them break enchantments that would smother. Heroic songs boosted savers and AC and another. Mass suggestion meant that you could subtly raise an army, and speak language meant you could convince more monsters not to harm me. And that's the changes made to Bard in 3.5 edition, taking more of what made them a unique fun tradition. In 4th edition, Bards were given new look and new stars, but the only way to explain the changes is interpretative dance.
And finally, we're here at last to the 5th edition Bard. Congratulations on making it this far, I bet that it was hard. You endured so much to get here, and it's almost due to end. Some it stands as limericks dance, and now you're here, my friend. Coming next, we'll discuss more the lecture path we wanted. I hope you enjoyed this tangent path and info that we flaunted. Apologies too for the wild dance that from my body issued. I hope you can forgive me, and of course to be continued.